Hello, and welcome to Japanese Craft Beer Reviews. Uh, from today, we're going to begin a new series, uh, and we're going to look at uh, 11 different beers from the Kyoto Brewing Company. And these are fairly recent beers that they have uh, produced, and uh, I uh, visited their tap room not too long ago and picked up uh, these 11 bottles. And uh, Kyoto Brewing Company is uh, uh, located in, of course, Kyoto, which is one of the ancient capitals of Japan. Uh, they started in the year 2015. They've been going a little over five years now. And uh, they were founded by three people, uh, an American, a Canadian, and a Welshman. And uh, full disclosure, I know all three of them. Uh, and I uh, have known the uh, American who is the head brewer uh, for a number of years uh, when he was a home brewer, even before he started brewing. Um, he uh, used to bring us his home brew, uh, friends, beer drinking friends, and we would sample it and uh, uh, give him our impressions. And uh, he was an excellent home brewer. Um, he also uh, studied in the US and he did an internship at Lost Abbey down in Southern California. And then in Japan, he did an internship at one of the very best craft breweries uh, in this country, uh, which is uh, Shiga Kogan Beer. So uh, he got a lot of experience and they started in 2015 and they were named the best new brewery in Japan for that year uh, by Rate Beer um, in the Rate Beer Best Rankings. And uh, they were also, in 2019, uh, the last, last year, they were also voted the best brewery in Japan by Rate Beer Best. So uh, they have been around again for five years. They have a tap room, uh, which is now has limited access due to the coronavirus. Uh, you can uh, go in and buy beer and sit outside and drink, uh, but they haven't opened the uh, upstairs uh, seating area yet. Um, and they're open on week weekends, primarily Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, occasionally they open for, uh, on weekend, holiday weekends, they may open a little longer than that. Um, they are, have three main flagship beers, which you can buy on their website. And they also have two seasonal lines. Um, one is called the Kimagure line, and that's generally... Uh, uh, pale ales or IPAs, things like that. And their second seasonal line is Shunka Shuto, which is, they're generally Saisons. And these are uh, four quarterly beers uh, following uh, the seasons. So Kimagure will uh, have a spring version, uh, a summer version, etc. And Shunka Shuto actually does mean uh, spring, summer, uh, autumn, and winter. So they come out, uh, so they have two seasonal lines, uh, four beers each in each one, so eight seasonal beers a year. But they put out a lot of one-offs too as well, uh, quite a few beers. Uh, on Rate Beer, in fact, they list 168 different beers, uh, and this is as of October. Uh, so in five years, they have made that many different beers. Uh, and on Untapped, uh, 137, so they haven't got quite all of them yet. Um, and the average ranking for their beers, rating for their beers is 3.71 on, on uh, untapped. So um, they have been quite successful uh, critically, and uh, right now they are, fortunately they got into bottling uh, and online sales before the coronavirus uh, really hit hard here. And so they've been able to keep things going with that and their tap room open as well. So let's look at 11 different beers from this uh, wonderful uh, brewery in Kyoto. And here we go with another Kyoto brewing beer. And this one is a kind of special one. It's called Kyoto Brewing Tropical Rays. The Japanese name is Nankoku no Hizashi, which means Southern countries, sunshine. So tropical rays is the in English name. And this is a fruit sour beer. Uh, 
in, in rate beer terminology, it's a sour, wild flavored, and the fruit, uh, the fruit sour, of course, is uh, refers to a fruit addition, uh, and that is in this case pineapple. Um, this beer comes in at 7.5 percent, a little bit high for the style, I think. Uh, 10 international bittering units, and on rate beer, it has two ratings only. It 2.95, so kind of low. Uh, untapped, 4.6 at 3.88 out of 5. Pretty high. So, uh, it has pineapple and uh, uh, and one more ingredient, which is kind of unusual, is tarragon, or S tarragon, as they call it here, which is uh, French tarragon, uh, an herb. So, kind of unusual to put these things together. Um, the higher uh, alcohol content, uh, according to the brewery website, is due to the large amount of pineapple that was added and the sugar content from the pineapple which fermented uh, into alcohol. So uh, this should be an interesting beer. Um, sour beers are not among my favorites. Uh, some people just love them. Um, let's give this one a go. Okay, it is a kind of dark pastel yellow color with a half a finger of substantial white head. Let's see what it looks like through the light. It almost completely blanches out. Okay, so very hazy, definitely unfiltered. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, this is unusual. Okay, I'm getting something like anise. Uh, not licorice, but anise. And that clearly must be the tarragon. Almost minty as well. The pineapple is kind of hidden behind this. Wow. Unusual. I've never smelled a beer quite like this. <coughs> okay, it's got some pineapple. Um, something more like peach too. Citrus, there's definite lactic note. I assume this is a, a kettle sour. Uh, the tarragon comes through as, as a kind of mint or anise sort of thing. Very unusual. I always like to give breweries points for trying something different, something unusual, and I'm not sure where they got the idea for putting tarragon into this, but it adds a very interesting note. Wow. Quite unusual. Um, there's just a hint of astringency, almost none. Uh, which you t tend to associate with a, a, a sour beer, you get some astringency on the tongue. We don't have much here at all. The malt was uh, Pilsner and wheat. The hops, bittering hops, were uh, Mercure. Flavor hops, none. Flavor and aroma hops, none whatsoever. So the focus is definitely on the fruit flavors and the herb flavor here. Mm. Quite unusual, uh, interesting. I don't think I would want more than one of these, but it is certainly an experience. Uh, yeah, and uh, very well done, very interesting addition to their lineup here. Again, this is called uh, Kyoto Brewing Nankoku no Hisashi uh, Tropical Rays, a fruit sour at 7.5%. I think maybe the added alcohol probably gives it a the flavor a little bit more punch too as well of course uh, so uh, try them out uh, Kyoto Brewing has a website uh, and they are selling beer online a variety of beers uh, and I think this one is still for sale so if you go online you can find their beers and uh, try them out 
as well. If you're in Kyoto, they are open on uh, weekends these days, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can stop by and uh, try their beers there too as well. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, we'll be looking at another Kyoto beer, uh, Kyoto Brewing beer in our next video. I hope you tune in for that. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.